Welcome to the Scent of Beauty. My name is Susan and this video is titled Integrity Slash Dignity. And this is part two. I suggest if you haven't listened to part one that you pause this video, listen to part one and then come back. But the gist of part one is how we are told that we take it too personally. Uh, why do you take it so personal? It referring to assaultive words um, that pounds and pounds on our being and after a while our ontological security, the nature of our being starts to get affected and the integrity, our integrity starts to um, move away and when the integrity has a crack an opening then our dignity become affected and when I refer to our dignity I'm referring to it's like having vertebrates vertebrates without disc the disc helps to separate and to hold uh, the spinal uh, column um, erected and so when our integrity is removed or is open, that leaves uh, an opening for our deaths, for our dignity to start to be removed. When that occurs, what usually starts to happen is we start to not trust ourselves our own uh, receptors, our indicators, our intro and inter structures starts to um, dissimilate. We're not able to hold ourselves, our being together because we start to question ourselves by saying and listening to others, you're taking it too personal. We stop trusting the strength of our capacity to reason. And I talked about how we taser our minds with excuses in order to hold on or to remain in abusive, psychological, abusive uh, relationships that pounds on our psyche. I heard a story years and years ago and um, it still resonate with me although I can't remember it verbatim but the story went uh, something uh, like this. A rich man that owned hotels uh, decided to um, give his manager that he respects uh, a hotel but he didn't tell the manager what he did tell the manager is he bought a lot and he told the manager this is the allowance that you have you know just built built a hotel and he spared no expense but the manager decided that he wants to please his boss and so he built the hotel but in building the hotel he got the cheapest material the most inexpensive material and he cut corners and he built this lavish hotel that looked um it gave the appearance of a five-star hotel but the integrity was compromised and so when he was finished uh his his boss said to him um congratulations this hotel is yours you can live in this hotel and and I never forgot that story, at least the gist of it, because what he built based on 
It's not even that he didn't have the funds, but based on the lack of dignity, he built a hotel without integrity and he was going to live in what he built. Absolutely. Um, I believe that we have to take it personal because if I don't take it, the slights, the, you know, the hard hitting uh, words, the psychological abuse, then it affects not only, again, our integrity, but our dignity gets so compromised, just like this manager, that he decide, even when he didn't have to, to build um, an environment where he didn't even realize it would be ultimately a place that he would have to reside. Any building, uh, if we're building a, a hotel, a house, um, just a building in general, there is to be integrity. A building is known by its integrity, what's inside, the material that it's made of. And the integrity is known based on weathering storms. A building never says, Oh, I'm not going to take it personally when a storm is hitting against it. It actually reacts to it. It either stands or it falls. But what we tend to do is we have a choice. We don't have to freeze. But so often we haven't learned how to remove ourselves from things that are beating against us that is taking away our integrity. And as I said in, in part one, we sometimes join in to remove our, not only our integrity, but our dignity starts to fall and to get lower and crumble. We have seen it happen, you know, where a building collapsed and there have been survivors and they have to be pulled out of the rubble. And when people get pulled out of the rubble, that's like when the integrity is gone, a place that is deemed unfit for a hum human, uh, a hum human standard of living when there's no integrity that stands and is erected, when the integrity and dignity is gone, when the frame collapse, if one stays, you have to crawl around in the rubble and crawling within ourselves. We might s survive the slights and the hits, the hard pounding assault, uh, verbal assault, because words, again, it hurts. It injures and it harms so we can survive, but we each have to ask ourselves, but is that living? Survivors um, usually, when there's no integrity and when the dignity collapse, just shuffle around in our own lives. And when there's just, when we have gotten into that rubble mode, modality, matrix, that method of, of living and thinking, when that occurs, then what we end up, we end up in a place where we're salvaging the losses, trying to pick out pieces that we could hold on, just trying barely to survive. But when integrity is gone and dignity, that is the best that we are afforded. Not taking it personal, that's a question. We shanty our minds when that occurs. And you know what that is? If you Google shanty, Towns. It's taking pieces, salvages of, you know, bits and pieces of what used to be a home, a house, 
and just something to shelter us. And we just allow ourselves to just be sheltered within ourselves, but we're not comfortable and we're not living in a home. And sometimes we shack, shackle ourselves to people that have lost their integrity and their dignity. And we could physically live in the most expensive home and in the best neighborhood with a shanty mindset because we haven't been taking it personally, personal. Our right superior temporal gyrus, that gets so affected. That's what I'm referring to, those pathways in our brains, those map sites in our brains that we don't even think of when we allow ourselves not to take these um when we allow these redefining moments to define and take away our autonomy so i'm going to stop this video at this point and i just want us to think about the storms when they come in the external world that we live in and the effects of what happens to a home and now if we could move internally and see what happens to us when we couldn't psychologically or verbalize the hits and the slights that were happening but now we have a frame of reference welcome to the scent of beauty